Hello, welcome to everybody. Also, we are starting our new meeting of Theatre in Conflict Zones of International Theatre Institute. And uh, I give the floor at first uh, to our Director General, Tobias Biancrona, for the greetings. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, everybody. It's great to see our Japanese friends and uh, our friends from Uganda. Um, it seems to me like, like the, the, at the moment the world is in conflict all over. So this seems like the, the zone of the, the conflict is, is, is not only where there is war, like I think the conflict is now going on and with the pandemic, we even see now conflict in, in in my country where I live at the moment and in France, etc., people are opposing the, the way governments are doing things which they don't understand, basically. And um, the, the, one of the duties of IDI is really building bridge between, um, not only between the, the people um, from different countries and from different cultures, but we need to build a bridge um, within the society, within the, the people, and we need to reach out with dance and theater um, to, to make people understand more what is going on in the world and how we can say, create a safe environment where peace can exist. And this is very much in the heart of the people. And I think um, what you all are doing and what um, the theater in conflict zone is uh, focusing on is really to, to bring peace and mutual understanding to all parts of the world and whatever you do. I know Japan does a lot. I will know more after this session is essential. What Fabio and Roberta and the Italian Center is doing, what Jessica Cava is doing, what I heard about her um, things that she's doing in Uganda is all essential. And I think um, it, it's, it's good what you are doing. And I'm extremely interested to hear what you are doing nowadays and what you have done and what you have to tell us to tell us your stories. So welcome to everybody. And I give the word back to uh, Fabio Toledi as the moderator of this session. Yes. Uh, OK, thank you, Tobias. And also, uh, I want to thank the Uganda Center of ITI and the Japanese Center of ITI also for the Japanese friend is night and also thank you very much for this effort to stay together but also generally the community of ITI works with the jet lag generally and so we have to find always a medium point to balance this and also thank you very much to you and also uh, at first I give the word to Jessica Kawa uh, you know very well because she has written the message of World Theater Day some years ago and also I have uh, the pleasure and the honor to meet her in different parts of all over the world and every time I have heard uh, very inspired words and also uh, I give the floor to Jessica Kawa of Haiti Uganda. Please. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, my dear brother Fabio, and um, I'm really privileged to be able to share a small thing about my practice today concerning theater in conflict zones. I sat down and thought that what is new I should share today because I've been sharing my practice but since that last time when we talked, we said we must come up with a manual, to write a manual that illustrates in simple ways that whoever from wherever, they can pick up this manual and use it to do some simple activities which bring big things in terms of dialogue and processes of finding ourselves again on the continuum. 
theater, applied theater in Uganda, like elsewhere on the continent, has not been structured in such a way to fit into academic, uh, academic structure of ways of assessing it, whether it is effective or not. But it is more of descriptive. Every narration is just describing the processes. So I've been thinking and I said, why can't we look at a standardizing aspect of this practice that we could use to assess its effectiveness? And today in this presentation, I want to kind of make it very clear and state that uh, applied theater must be rethought. We must rethink it and think of the methodology and the methodology me I'm proposing that we should be thinking of context, the context, the conditions, prevailing conditions under which it is done that should be our guiding factor. And even I'm so glad that when our General, General Secretary uh, uh, Tobias has clearly said, conflict is no longer in terms of war and guns, it is everywhere. And a good instance is how things are right now in France and in many other capitals of the world. The pandemic has created its own conflicts domestic and national and international, because right now nations are also up in, in arms that they should take care of themselves first before they take care of their neighbors. All these contribute to issues of conflict. And it is under such that I feel and believe that if we consider the context, our practice to be anchored in context, then we are likely to move forward with theater in conflict zones because we will not have a narrow way of looking at theater in conflict zone. We begin to see theater broadly applicable in every situation based on the prevailing circumstances. Are we underscore the centrality of context in theater experimentations for dialogue, for dialogue, mm -hmm. situation by situation analysis and in post event critical evaluations. I hope that the insights emanating from this presentation will contribute towards the standards, the standards, the standardization of applied theater pedagogy in conflict zones. Uh, now I ask a question, where to begin? I'm talking from a practical experience and a practical experience that I have documented for the purposes of our manual that we are planning to publish together with uh, Fabio's effort. Deep compassion is number one. Before we go into any conflict situation, we must have deep compassion. Do we have compassion enough to go into a situation to begin mobilizing for dialogue, for analysis and mediation? So we must begin with deep compassion. Second, step where to begin is desire for transformation of the situation. How, how do we concretize our desire into tangibles? Our need to see transformation in the dialogue, in this course, in the case of the pandemic right now, it is to see it in terms of discourse how can we contribute to the current discourse if we were to use theater, for example? We must have that desire for transformation of situation. That leads us to step three. The step three, I have searched and realized we must do research 
research on the situation and interventions already conducted. That brings us to the conclusion that as practitioners, we must be informed thoroughly well on the situation we are entering to mediate using theater. Step four, I have also reason, and I think it may work if we seek collaborations. If it is a nation, for example, or a community, we need to, to have collaborations of the CSOs, that is the civil society organizations in the place. Because in every given community, there is a way the community is structured to function. We must seek to know these structures before we go in to do our theater intervention. Then we must also research on the government line ministries that are mandated in that aspect. For example, in Uganda, we have a ministry for mm -hmm. disaster, disaster preparedness, which is there in case there is any disaster of any kind, whether it's floods, war, uh, civil war breakout, land wrangles, that ministry is charged to handle. So we must make research and find out which are these government line ministries and what are the activities do they have in a particular community? Because when we go there and we do our intervention, when we leave, we should not leave the people we have trained without help. We must leave them in the hand of a structured system that we see through every decisions that may arise or come out of that intervention. We must also get in touch with community leadership, opinion, persons, etc. Even religious leaders, cultural leaders, in some instances. In, in some countries abroad, they have councils. They have something like town, town councils, but they call them town hall, governors, all those people they are meant to be engaged when we go to do a major theater for conflict intervention because this involves a whole community and a whole groups of people. You may bring together the warring seg seg sectors, the factors, uh, uh, actors from the, the antagonists and also the protagonists in the case of drama, we are now using drama terminology, but you may want to get those people who are fighting one another to have their representatives come and attend this theater workshop. Because it is theater workshops cannot work in isolation, but they work together with the systems and the structures. When the structures want to have dialogue, they have theater as a crunch a crunch on which to leap and to get quick results, to melt down, to melt down this, the people who can't talk. But because of the playful way, people begin to open up. So theater does not go alone. It goes with a lot of other interested stakeholders. Therefore, these other people whom I have just listed, like CEOs, uh, civil society organization, government line ministry activities, actors, community leadership and opinion leaders, they are all together when we are doing this community engagement dialogue. In case of offices where there is crisis, where workers are rioting endlessly and the organization have decided to use interactive means of engagement, and theater happens to be invited. There you have the administration plus the workers all engaged in this dialogue forum. So we need to have this research done 
And also before we travel, in case you are traveling to another nation, we need to insist that our host meets some of these criterions, especially the research on the situation, the seeking of collaboration, and that one will give us an idea on how to choose the communication strategy. Because theater is being applied to situations <laughs> that are previously seen as things that belong to certain other lines of discipline, like uh, if it is a political situation, they feel the political scientists should be in the lead, the legal should be in the lead, the constitutional writers, they should be in the lead. But now theater as an art is entering domains which pre previously has been exclusively, where it has been exclusively left out. But now we become inclusively engaged to cause dialogue. So we need also to guide these people if they want our services to serve them. Now that brings us to something I call skill building blocks. After you have seen where to begin, we have deep compassion, desire for transformation of situation, research on situation and interventions already conducted to be informed and seeking collaborations to live in a place so that the, the achievements are maintained, then choosing the communication strategy. It's very critical, but also it is anchored on skills, on skill building blocks, which I'm going to mention. That is the suspension. Skill number one we have to have is suspending our judgment. Suspension of judgment is very critical and most challenging foundation for dialogue. Perhaps the most challenging because in our normal way of thinking, we divide, organize, and label. Because our ego becomes identified with how we, th we think things and often find ourselves defending our positions against the doors of others. Mm -hmm. This makes it difficult to us to stay open to new and alternative view, views of reality. It is hard to listen when we are engaged in heated battle about who is right and who is wrong. So we have to really suspend our judgment and enter this arena of dialogue, of search for dialogue, with open mind. We cannot say this group is wrong or that group is right. We need to listen. But for us to listen properly, we begin by suspending our judgment. Some people, when I was young, they will say, you have a judgmental spirit because a person who judges quickly never learns because you have decided, you can't learn. Even if people talk, you, you already know exactly what it is. So we need to suspend our judgments and create space between our judgment and our reaction. And that's open the door for listening. Suspending judgment is also key to building a climate of trust and safety. When you go in, in two a situation, I'm very privileged. I have ever mediated in real life situation where people were fighting. And this was between the government of Uganda and the breakaway LRA uh, sector in the Northern Uganda in 2002. I was able to enter this place. First, I had to talk to the people who were trying to restore the peace. It took two weeks of getting the people on board with us. As we talked about the human rights, we talked about peacemaking, we talked so many things before we could get through and we began to see things together. And the processes are those processes that I'll be discussing 
either today. Some of them I will touch them using my PowerPoint, but some I will discuss them in the manual. And also maybe if I'm given another opportunity to come again in this particular forum. But what, what happens is there is a section of the worrying factors whom you can approach, especially those who want to restore peace. Those are easy to work with because they want something to bring peace. That is the unity in diversity. They have, they are, their focus is to restore peace. Then you need also to listen to the other worrying factor. What do they want? Do you know what we discovered? We discovered the other people just wanted people to listen to them, listening, just to listen to their needs. Very small thing, but mighty thing that cost lives and cost the future of our country. Because when people feel they can't, people are not listening, they will do anything. Therefore, we need to have that deep desire to see transformation. You must work with this other group that want to restore peace. That their desire is anchored on the right premise and they are willing to listen to the other parties complain or stake. And immediately they are able, war is nothing. War will come to an end. Even in the, in the real situation of children at school, when they are fighting, it is not good to judge that this one is right or the other one is bigger, this one is smaller. Why is a small person fighting a big person? And why are you coming to separate them without understanding why they have started their fight? So you need to listen to all of them. You have to work hard to understand them. Don't judge. Then that moves us to the another level of block, the block I call assumption identification. Identify means to recognize, to pick out from your surroundings, to fill one with. Assumptions are those things which are assumed or thought to be. So to identify assumptions is to recognize or identify that which we think it is so. We think is so. It is probably obvious to most of us that our assumptions play a large role in how we evaluate our environment. The decisions we make and how we behave yet is just aspect of thinking that we consistently overlook when we seek to solve problems, resolve conflicts, or create synergy among diverse people. There are, we must also identify our assumption. Are they so? And if they are not so, it is not hard. Accept it, that is not so. So you have to work hard to find the root cause of the problem. I will jump quickly and say, our failure to look at the underlying belief systems can lead to disappointing results. When we examine underlying assumptions behind our decisions and actions, we reach the, the causal level of the problem. We are able to identify where there are disconnects in our strategies and take more effective actions. By learning how to identify our assumptions, we can also explore differences with others work to build common ground and consensus, and to get to the bottom core of the misunderstanding and differences. I will be showing some illustrations because 
we really have to work hard as people who are using this tool, this powerful tool of theater, because the tool of theater is a tool where people can touch because they see and experience in space together, they can see. And the people who are doing this theater are people like them. They are from the communities because you are working with the people from the communities and now they are all playing what they live on daily basis. And others are looking at themselves through these very people whom they know, whom they don't even expect to speak on a platform. So it is very critical that we eliminate every assumption openly. This requires a lot of time and love and compassion. That also brings us to another key factor that is listening, key to perception. Let us take a minute right now to ask ourselves personal definition of listening. Think about activities you identify with listening. How do you know you are listening? Being listened to, what does listening feel like? How could you listen? And how could you enhance your listening? The way we listen has a lot to do with our capacity to learn and build quality relationship. The way we listen has the capacity to build quality relationship with others. When we are able to suspend judgment and listen to diverse percep pers pers perspectives, we expand and deepen our worldview. It is act of listening that allows us, allows for integration and synthesis of the new insights and possibilities. And people really are quick to know when you are not listening. You have to listen, not just pretending that you are looking all into their eyes. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. It works from deep inside. Remember, I began with deep compassion. And I'm going to really leave many things out I had planned to share with you, to look at the pictures. And then in those pictures, I will talk to those PowerPoints. And then I will expand also on the issues of inquiry and reflection, interlocking, building blocks, those things I've talked about, how you interlock them and weave them into a dialogue. It is a whole life's experiment. I cannot put it into words in the shortest time and in this particular forum. But it is very critical that we keep trying. And that's why we have these seminars, I believe, to sharpen each other on the other aspects which we may not have looked upon. We also have to look at the behavior we ex expose when we are doing this theater for conflict, we need behaviors that support dialogue. Suspension of judgment when listening and speaking. Respect for differences. Role and status suspension. Like for example, Jessica is a doctor, a philosophic doctor, not a medical doctor. Because I'm a doctor, people begin to say, oh, Dr. Kawa, Dr. Kawa. That alone creates the separation between you and the people you are talking to, you, they believe you know everything. But the, to tell the truth, the context in which I've worked, nobody knows it. You keep getting shocked what you learn along the way as you go. Let us look at this. Uh, Simeone, you can help us to show those, uh, my PowerPoint. And I will talk quickly through them and we shall pick a few things. Our focus is to mm, focus mm. on learning, even in the field, we must focus on learning. 
when you live safe, you have gone to Lebanon like my brother has been to Lebanon to work. It is not what you have done there. It is what you have learned from there. That matters. What have you learned? If you learn something from a situation, then that situation it makes you richer. And it makes the people through who, uh, with whom you have learned. Because as you are learning, they are learning about themselves and their capacities to solve their own problem. It is more practical. It is not theory. And that's why I'm so excited and even found it necessary, though I'm not feeling well, that I must participate in this seminar. Because the learning, last time I watched on YouTube, I followed the Dr. Mandu, I, 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 yes, Mande and his team. And I learned quite a lot. I became richer. I may have not input anybody, but I became richer. That is the aim that when you leave the space, people have learned something from you. And you have learned quite a lot from them. Because by the time you appear in another space, you are going to be richer in your sharing, in your movement, in your humility, in everything you do. That is theater for conflict. You, it is not standardized that it is done this way. It is your capacity as a facilitator, as a theater worker, as a theater activist to learn, to learn, to learn, to learn. <laughs> Now let us look at this uh, PowerPoint. I don't know how you operate it. I think Simeone will be showing it. Now we are looking at that uh, PowerPoint. Let us go to the PowerPoint one where the prisoners, uh, we are, the students are at the prison place. They are seated and watching their friends performing. Yes, number one there. Mm -hmm. You see, when you look at the students, they are looking intently. Of course, they are tired, but uh, uh -huh. the students are looking intently and the prisoners also are looking intently on the play. I'm telling you those students watching, they were part of the rehearsals of that play. But once the play is on stage, there is a suspension of belief where it is happening. And they watch intently. And also the prisoners who are watching it for the first time, they are also watching. And because the other people who, who participated are also watching, it is, becomes contagious. There is contagiousness in the watching. The next, uh, the next one, please. Yes, the, the, the students are playing, they are all playing. Then we go to the next. We go to the next, yeah. Now we have that prisoner coming also to showcase. Uh, the, it has moved very quickly, but the prisoner comes and starts narrating what he has picked from that play, how it touched him. Now, the one which we are seeing is that one of the, of the women and men in the IDP camp, turning everything in the environment to work for them. I and my colleague were there, and the man with the guitar is a blind man, but that man can play that guitar. So if you go there with the, that you know everything, you may be shocked. We found a blind man who could play the guitar. And because he was playing the guitar, whatever we did was their play. And they started creating their stories, the way they live, the way they suffer economically. They were able to do, the pictures are not here, some of them, but they, the story begins by integrating their own in the music. 
and the rest also jump in. We can move on to the next one for in interest of time. Uh, now here we are in the open. Other people were playing their games and it had rained. The place is muddy and messy. But my students whom were training to go into places where there are conflict, because the conflict here was issues of sanitation and who should do it. Now these people, we, we talked with them. Let us show how you, you use the, pie, the toilets. How, do you, how are you impacted by lack of the place to go for easing oneself? Move on to the next one, please. You see, the man shows that when you go to these toilets, you don't have to squat low. You must stand up halfway up because you fear to get diseases from the toilet. Now, when he started doing, you can see the people in the background who are playing, some of them have already turned to look around what is going on. And this is a spontaneous theater on the road. We teach all these theaters for our students not to waste time, but to go with music, drums and things and get people where they want to make communication, to have people engaged in their own communication so that they solve their own problem. You can see the man demonstrating how they do. That one takes a, a lot of understanding why you are there. Let us move on to the next. Now he has gone low. Then they start dialoguing when he's quoting like that. What could happen? How can you do it? And people were talking and talking about the situation in their lack of sanitation. And you can see even where they are, it is not a formal ground for theater, but people have already gathered to talk on the issues of sanitation, not to leave it in the municipal council's hands, that it is a thing that they too can that. Now the man whom we found in the community is already explaining to others, his colleagues there, He's a convert to us. He has already been converted. But we don't play any part for us. We leave theater to move within the people's hands so that theater have its, uh, its total impact. Now move the next one. Let us move to the next one. The next. Now this is uh, children. Uh, we normally have a, a, a season in April where uh, we take our students to do peace work, where they, they, they teach the children to play games of peace. And then they collected students from, uh, from different schools to come to a, a hall called Sharing Hall, is a Catholic hall in the capital city of Kampala. And many kids come, it is a huge hall. You can have about five to even seven schools coming to attend in that hall except this year and last year it has not taken place because of the COVID issues. But every year we used to take it there when we are training our, our students in children theater and dealing with issues of peace, nationalism, patriotism and things like that. So you bring them together and they Then after they will do that, bring out their own understanding. The next one. Next uh, PowerPoint. Uh, that one was in Sudan. My friend Al Madi must know, Ambassador Al Madi must know about this one. It was also to resolve issues of education where parents were not sending their children to school. And they had the man hold a huge pencil. The pencil is longer than even the man the one seated on the ground, and then the people had come in a people's court and they were discussing issues. But see the seating arrangement. It is a context arrangement, communal arrangement. We are in a place where we could have been in theater, but they felt that this thing had to do with the community and people in the community sit together in round, therefore they had to do it in round. And I have this picture because I love this picture because it brings out that theater in round very well and that it can take place anywhere, anytime. Let us go to the next. Next PowerPoint. So that I go back to 
Now, again, we are in the Islam area dealing with issues of uh, domestic violence. And mm -hmm. where we did display, it is also very in, un, 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 informal space. But see, the children came and the children were able to talk into this play, how they feel about their parents when they are fighting. And some adults came and also discussed the issues of economic disenfranchisement as a cause of the conflict in their homes. But what was critical was the children, they were there to talk to their parents. Next. Next, next, next. We are standing in a place where they call Rhino Boxing Arena. It was started by one of these women, the, 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 the woman down here, the small, the shorter woman. He started a boxing arena for people in slums because they didn't have any activity. Instead of fighting, he said they should go and box there. The men should always come and do boxing so that they don't box their wives. I was so happy they took me to show me after the show. They took me to see there and then they were singing. And that is what I told you to being one with the people you are dealing with. When you are one with them, they open up and they tell stories. And when they tell their real stories, we are able to, to talk and find solutions to the problem and how best we can align up with the line ministries that may help to improve this system. As I speak now, they have even built a small stadium for the children where they, they, they will be playing, following up with this. But it was because we lined with the, the government line ministries that had activities that wanted to improve the slums around Kampala. Next, next PowerPoint, please. Uh, this story comes before the PowerPoint, which I wanted where we are seated in a circle, but we will talk about it. These are students of uh, MIPA, master's students who are learning about theater and conflict zone and how they can identify the causes of conflict and what are the consequences of this conflict. Now they did a scenario and from the scenario, they are able to discuss about these people who are lying down when they are passing them. How do they feel about these people, the people on the streets? Because in the class, they said they are, they, the major issue in this Amsterdam is a, a street, uh, they call they call them not bums, but those people sleep uh, who sleep on the streets, that they had a lot of a, like almost a pandemic of the street dwellers. So we said, why are they sleeping on the streets? Some people said drugs, some people said many things. But by the time we finish in the class, they realize it is not only the other things they had mentioned like drugs, lack of finance, but they found that the people, the society is the one which has created those people who are sleeping on the streets. Next, next, next. PowerPoint. Uh, excuse me, Jessica, we have to try to find the final uh, intervention because you okay. take 40 minutes instead of oh, 20. Right. <laughs> it's very interesting. What are you saying for this? But I'm sorry, okay. I have let this us, uh, let, to manage okay, the time also move. for our friends from Japan. OK, let us move to that place where the children in Poland are looking at this back clothes. Then I will wind up with that. Move, move, uh, next, next, next. The one with the children looking at uh -huh, those maps and the next one, yes. Yes, that one. I will end with that one. I will end with the, no, the other children. Please bring back the one with the children and the back cloth. Uh-huh, that one, yes, please. Now, when we are doing theater for conflict uh, analysis and evaluation, First, we must find the dialogue, the common ground. In this particular workshop, we were at the borderlands, dealing with the issues of Lithuania. Uh, those are the neighbors of uh, 
the neighbors of uh, this, uh, this place, the eastern part of uh, uh, Poland, they had issues on the borderland and the people participating there from across and some from Poland. So first of all, I knew Jessica from Uganda. I didn't know even I was going to be the only <laughs> black woman there. <laughs> I thought I would meet some other people there, like uh, Africans there, but I found that all they were all Europeans. But because I knew somehow, somehow, that is deep inside, I'm likely not to find people from African continent in the villages of Poland, I decided to take things that identify me. I drew them up with my hands and I, 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 I I framed it with wood, rugged wood, and then I carried the back cloth, which is symbolic of Uganda traditional wear before the civilization of cloth came. I, they, when they touched the cloth and they saw the maps, the children asked me, did you carry these maps on the plane? I said, yes. Just like this, I said, yes, I carried them. And I wanted you to see how Uganda and Poland are similar because in the maps, if you see the two maps before, the two, can I see that two maps, please? The, the PowerPoint before this one? Yes, you can see those two maps. The Polish map is uh, hid by the head of this young child. But what you see, there is blue symbolizing water and green land. And uh, I said, we started by identifying the commonalities. That is how you create the situation of unity in diversity. People to begin to understand that we are, we have a lot in common. Even if I was white and they are white and I'm from Lithuania and they are from Poland, we must bring these things out and see, show the map of Lithuania, what is common in Lithuania map and what is common in a uh, common to the Polish map. Uh, we end there, as I told you, that it's hard to put practice in 20 minutes. This is a whole life, a lifetime of practice. I'm trying to um, hurriedly explain what has worked for me. There are many things I have done in terms of getting that commonality. And it is that commonality we work for. Those are the behaviors that support dialogue. Immediately people find that actually our, our difference is very small. Our commonality, our things that connect us are bigger than people begin to talk. I we end there and I say that this book is a must. We must write the manual, uh, Mr. Dr. Fabio, we have to write. We have to put it into writing so that people can access it. Thank you so much for the privilege. Thank you so much, you. Roberta, for the effort. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Tadia. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I am sorry to ask you to cut something, but also generally, we, you have very well trained. You are able to, with a poem, to describe an uh, entire life. <laughs> and also for this, I'm sorry to ask you to, but also now I give the floor uh, immediately to uh, Eli Kamiwa. I want to thank Jessica Kawa, of course, and also I want to thank the friend of uh, ITI Japan. It's very important, this meeting for us. And also we are sure that we can create a common action, uh, not only in theater and conflict zones, but mainly on this topic so important for all the community of ITI. Please, Eli Kamiwa, and you will present the other guest. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Eli Kamiwa from Japan, ITI Japanese Center. Um, thank you, Jessica. That was a wonderful talk and speech. And then I'm so moved, your ideas and your energy, the passion, and what all, all you all what you have done. So great. And then I have learned quite a lot from what you what you just um, shared with us. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, now, 
Now I am going to introduce what our Japanese Center of ITI have been doing in the um, theater in conflict zones like activities. We have been doing theater born in conflict zones events for more than 10 years. And we are going to share our experiences and the history of the events for, for the first time, maybe in details to you. First, I am going to introduce Professor Sota Shuji, Shuji Sota, to give us, give you the general idea of the events, theater born in conflict zones. Um, Simonetta, Professor Sota may ask you to use a PowerPoint slide during his speech. So please make it ready. Thank you very much. So please, Professor Sota, to start. Thank you, Erika. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting us to ITI Japanese Center to be here. Uh, and uh, I must uh, firstly uh, say that uh, uh, Jessica's uh, presentation uh, was uh, really, really moving and thrilling. Uh, and I, I was very much moved. And firstly, um, before I start, uh, I'd like to uh, say uh, we are very much grateful to Italian Center uh, to invite us here uh, and uh, organize this seminar. And uh, uh, I also thank uh, uh, Mr. Tobias Bianconi uh, for his uh, warm, warm welcome. Um, Japanese Center of ITI uh, started the project named Theater Born in Conflict Zones, TBCZ, uh, in 2009. It consists of reading of the foreign plays which have not been translated into Japanese language before. Um, the number of plays which were introduced under the title of Theater Born in Conflict Zones uh, has amounted so far to 27. Uh, please uh, move uh, PowerPoint slide uh, to the next and uh, uh, please uh, keep uh, the slide uh, about 10 seconds per slide uh, and then go to the next. Um, okay. Well, uh, theater born in conflict zones, uh, the attempt by ITI Japanese Center in which we produce and present foreign plays uh, that are uh, related to the theme to Japanese audience and theater critic once a year, every December, uh, in a tiny space within Tokyo Metropolitan Theater. With seating capacity of around 50, this series offers two or three performances of readings of the play, uh, newly translated, uh, which was selected and uh, produced by Mr. Hideki Hayashi, uh, who are here uh, with us today. Quite often, lectures and symposia on relevant themes are added to provide audience with the key information for deeper understanding and appreciation. We have invited many distinguished guests from abroad to Tokyo at the reading occasions, include, including uh, Ms. Yair Ronen uh, from Israel, Germany, Mr. Ismail Saidi, from Belgium, uh, Mr. Gannam Gannam from Jordan, Mr. Rodi Vera from the Philippines, Mr. Neil Palvi from Israel, UK, Mr. Ihab Zahad uh, from Palestine, Mr. Yalma George Geoffrey Eichhorn from Germany, Bolivia. Also, we invited producers 
and artists of TCZN network worldwide, including Mr. Ali Mahdi Nuri from Sudan and Mr. Thomas Engel from Germany, among others. Because of the limited capacity of the venue for theater born in conflict zones, tickets are always sold out for almost every performance. Now, please allow me to introduce a little a bit about ITI Japanese Center's activities. Our main regular task uh, is to edit and publish theater yearbook in Japan, together with theater uh, yearbook from abroad as two-in-one publication. The former is written in English, the latter in Japanese. The former explains outlines of Japanese theater with the text written by theater critics and journalists. The latter contains the report on theater in general in around 20 uh, foreign countries and regions written by academic scholars uh, specialized in foreign theaters. Please note that theater yearbook of ITI Japanese Center English version is now available on the website through ISSUU ebook system, totally free of charge. Please visit ITI Japanese Center's website for more detailed information. Japanese Center of ITI receives the grant for the purpose of editing and uh, publishing theater yearbook through Agency for Cultural Affairs of Japanese government. Of course, it is a great and indispensable support which enables us to publish theater yearbook regularly. But still, we must say that we do not have sufficient support and it is very hard to uh, maintain our mandatory activities every year. Why we have inaugurated the theater born in conflict zones? Why have we continued the project for these 12 years? It may sound a little bit too much generalized, but in Japanese society, not so many people are interested in the conflict that are happening in the world. Likewise, not so many people know the value of theater as a tool for committing themselves in social issues. That is why Japanese Center of ITI has engaged ourselves in introducing the uh, foreign place which deal with the various conflict situations in the world and to give wider perspective among Japanese audience uh, and theater people. It is a kind of a uh, step-by-step approach and we have continued this attempt uh, through this TBCZ series. Now, uh, let me explain a brief outline of Japanese theater activities in general. As a background knowledge uh, of uh, Japanese theater today, among Japanese society, we have so many kinds of theater activities, including commercial theaters, commercial businesses, just like those in Broadway in New York. Several big theater companies produce and present big scale Western style musical plays. On the other hand, uh, we have Kabuki theater, for example, uh, which have long tradition of more than 400 years from its origin. Quite in interesting thing about Kabuki is that it is not just a preserved cultural heritage, but it is regarded uh, as a very lively, high quality, refined entertainment like operas and ballet in Western societies. This is also, ah, no, no, sorry. There is also a big amount of private independent theater troops in Japan. Their activities fall into various categories, 
some are entertaining, some are experimental, and some are strongly oriented to commit themselves in social or political issues. During the recent three decades, many publicly owned theater venues are constructed and became active throughout Japan, especially in greater Tokyo areas. We can say that publicly owned big scale theaters like uh, I mentioned are quite active in producing highly high quality theater productions uh, from very tiny ones to big scale ones. Tokyo Metropolitan Theater and Saitama Art Theater are both good examples. Tokyo Metropolitan Theater have kindly given us ITI Japanese Center the opportunities for implementing TBCZ reading performances as joint project. Saitama Arts Theater picked up and uh, produced the three plays of TBCZ so far, including Zihad, The Third Generation, and Lilac Duha, respectively, some years after ITI's readings. This kind of continuing effort in association with uh, public theaters for promote producing foreign plays will surely contribute to the liveliness and richness of Japanese theater today. I hope this initiative of Japanese Center of ITI will continue and be supported by many theaters and theater practitioners in the world, as well as in Japan from now and onward. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sota. I hope his um, Sota-san's general view of the theater born in conflict zones, which is our present uh, main events in the in our Japanese center and his general view of what we have been doing in the Japanese center gave you some kind of idea. Um, let me tell you where Japan is. <laughs> Professor Sota says that Japanese people are not so much aware of what is going on in the world, but maybe when you see where we are, um, you will know the reason. Thank you, Ayako. Would you please show us the world map, map and where we can see where we are? I know if this is only for the ITI people, maybe I shouldn't have done this, but um, I heard that this can be live streaming recorded on YouTube. So maybe it's, it may give some idea of Japan. Sometimes people mixed up with Korea and China and Philippines and everywhere. So um, let us see where we are. Sully, just a moment, please. Sure, sure, it's okay. Okay. World map. I saw the name world map, Ayako, just now. Yes, yes, just now. Uh, I made a, a PowerPoint and just... Um, <sighs> We are in the, uh, the, the, there is a radio station from the America called Far East Network. So it is Far East, um, but now here in this world map made in Japan, Japan is at the center of the world. <laughs> I was so shocked when I, uh, went study in Britain and then in Seoul, Britain is in the center of the world map. For us, Britain is the far west country and the far east is America itself. But, um, you know, Japan is located there, very, very close to Russia, very, very in, at the northern end and very, very close to South Korea 
in the southern end. And in between, there is huge China there. Uh, and Australia, Philippines, Bali, yeah. Britain, Britain, Europe, it's very far away. We can't even reach, you know. And America, very far away. We can't even reach without airplanes. We have information. Well, we have some history of getting information through Far East Network, which is the American Broadcasting Radio Station, right? So when I was young, I hear music through Far East Network and getting the American top 40s and everything, which means that many of our information come through United States. And theater born in conflict zones, which Mr. Hayashi started, just open up our eyes to the other words apart from the United States. How, now, now you can see how important this theater born in conflict zones events and the, 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 yeah, the events are so important to all of us. And I want to hand this talk to Mr. Hayashi, who started and organized through, through many odds and <laughs> difficulties. Please start. And then this is the map of Japan itself. And sometimes Mr. Hayashi would put some names of Japanese uh, places and Ayako is going to show where they are on the map. So please, Mr. Hayashi, start to show more uh, okay. Tell us more details about the theater foreign conflict zones, please. Thank you, Erika, and thank you, Fabio, Tobias, Jessica, uh, invite us, Simone, that invite us uh, to your seminar. I'm very happy to see you, sir, uh, this online. <laughs> and I, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I didn't uh, speak English long, long time. <laughs> So my English is sometimes very broken. So anyway, let's start. When, uh, when uh, we... Eto, Mr. Hayashi, do you want uh, to start the slideshow now or later on? A uh, little bit I speak. And after then, uh, please okay. start the video. Okay. 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 So Simonetta, Mr. Hayashi is going to tell you when to start the number one. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. Mr. Hayashi, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, as Mr. Soda uh, mentioned about uh, ge ge geomicary, geomicary <laughs> maps, <laughs> show you the maps of Japan. <laughs> it's uh, very far from Japan to America, Europe, Africa. But ancient time, uh, our culture, came from uh, China, Korea, India, Persia, and even uh, Greeks and Rome uh, through a long, long time come to, came to Japan. And also 150, 100, 150 years before we opened the country to the world and uh, also, we accept the culture from West uh, Europe and America. So our culture is, this is my own idea. Our culture is like a hybrid uh, mixed culture through long, long time. <laughs> anyway, let's start. When we started this project, this project, uh, Shelter Born in Conflict Zone, uh, TBCZ, uh, many people told me that it was far away. Yeah, maybe far, means of far away is uh, uh, many, many, I think many meanings. Anyway, I replied them, bringing, bringing distant things closer to each other is also the mission of a theater. This is always my reply to them who told about the far away. <laughs> so uh, I would like you would like to 
see you a picture of this project. Please start simulate. Please start the video. Yes, uh, in spitting distance by Tahel Najib, Palestine, uh, this play is a one man play about the daily life of an actor living in Palestine based on his own experiences. The author, uh, Tahel Najib, came to Japan. We invite him to Japan and he read the script by himself in Arabic. Uh, please start and uh, Simoneta, Simoneta, you don't have to put the pause. You can just keep playing. Thank when you. When I need to stop, I asked you to please stop the video and please start. The video is going. Uh, uh... Okay, okay. You didn't stop it, right? No, no, no. It's going. Yeah. Hey, some video to. あの、再生中だそうです。あ、そうですか。これとでもどんどん変わっていくんですよ。5分ごとに。I'm sorry. Uh uh same. Yeah, I can see the time number is going. It's 1:30 now. 1:30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something happened or うん、わからない. Um, I don't I can try to go more. Yeah, but please. It's, it's the same. You see? Uh huh. Hey, son, time is moving. Six forty-four. Six forty-four. Okay. Okay. Ayako, Ayako, san, this video, do you have the video, do you have the video of this? えっと、今ちょっとすぐに出せないんですが、林さんこれもう一度。あ、せますよ、こちらでは。あ、出していただけますか。これでコードホストに。それか送っていただけますか。ちょっと待ってください。それか送っていただけますか。ちょっと待
by Trevor Jamison and Scott Rankin, Australia. Well, after World War II, there were indigenous people who were uh, nuclear victim by British nuclear test. This is a hidden history for them. A play created by Trevor, an actor of an Aboriginal grandson who was exposed to radiation based on his grandfather's experience. In 2011, the Fukushima nuclear power plant accident occurred in Japan. So we, dis we have a discussion uh, about, uh, we have a talk event and discussion about uh, uh, connect the two experiences. This play, uh, Third Generation by Yael Rowland and the company. Uh, it depicts the difficulty of dialogue. A work created by young Israel, Israel Arab and German actors researching their grandparents' experience of war. Yes, she is Yael Ronen. And next. This play, three in one from Palestine. Uh, play on their true feelings, written by three actors working in Hebron, West Bank. They ask themselves, is theater useful to society in the play? In a work like a self-question and answer with the question, is Palestine really liberated from occupation through theater like this? Uh, I can't, actor said. So what are you doing theater for? Like this, they ask themselves, how connect, how relate between theater and society. It depicts the conflict they face every day. One actor we have, we invite to Japan and held a seminar. seminar. He said, it is not easy for us to come here here means Japan. And I think, I think maybe this is the last time. But two years later, uh, we invited him to Japan in another organization, held workshop for young Japanese theater people in Tokyo and Fukushima. And two years later, co-production with a Japanese theater company was realized. He is Ihab Zahada. And right, ah, uh, sorry. Next. Next play. This is infinite incompleteness. A uh, work created by gathering the voice of people who have experienced loss in conflict. Yarma Jorge Joffrey Einstein uh, Eichhorn, director of display, we invite to Japan to hear first time about the actual situation and theater activity in Afghanistan. He was invited back to Japan two years later and held workshop in Tokyo and Kanazawa. 
as a small city, and not small, but uh, very far away from Tokyo. This is uh, Burkaba Ganza in Pakistan, a work by Shahid Nadim, creator of a theater company that is working with high risk in Pakistan because in a work, uh, because of a work that stops religious extremes, extremism in an industrial style in <coughs> All the actor appeared with their face hidden. He is also of this prey. And next, Barat of the Burning Star. A play about the identity of Neil Pardi, a writer and actor who came to work in London, who was is real, Jewish, and raised in settle, settlement. We invite him to Japan and had a talk event. And the next play uh, from Syria. Before the dinner at this play, writer began to delight the play just as he escaped from the Damascus. Uh, we wanted to be contact contacted and praying that he was alive, but we couldn't get in touch and were worried about that he had died. However, he managed to escape safely to a refugee camp in Turkey. And the Lilaitum manuscript was also in time for the performance. <clears throat> Twenty-fifteen. And the next play, Ismail and Isabel by Lodi Bella, Philippine. An allegory about the conflict between Muslim and Christian Christians set on the Philippine island of Mindanao, a play in which two, two cross child, childhood friends are torn apart by adult strike. A play written by the writer Lodi for the young people of the capital in Philippines. And also we invite him and uh, have a talk this uh, event. Sorry. Okay. And also next video, could you start the next video, Simone? <laughs> okay, yes, Simonetta, could, Simonetta, could you start video number two? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I hope it would Thank work. You. <laughs> yeah, that looks fine. It's yes. fucking. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, this is a ben our venue. It is an exhibition space in the theater. In the theater, uh, it is very small, and the distance between the audience and the actor is only one meter. So close. This pro project has been <laughs> continued with that uh, thought very close, not far away. <laughs> we always say far away, so audience and the uh, actor is always close.
their address and out of the space is uh, <laughs> not narrow. video installation of our leading performance. And different of display, uh, di di different of this project. The theater is uh, uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Theater. It's a very big theater, but we chose a small space, exhibition space, and very from very small space, we try to uh, make a bridge between very far away place and Japan uh, and us. This is a shutter yearbook. Okay, please stop the videos. Hi. Through this project, we are made aware of how we do not know about this world. For both actors and directors who, who experience this project, there are many unknowns and we always study from the start. For me, it is such a project that I think of our ignorance. <clears throat> okay, please uh, start the next video. Just we want to show you uh, our uh, stage, stage work. Once, Hired uh, tie, uh, lost horses, meaning is lost horses, horses. Uh, also is Aduna Arwa Oda from Syria. Now he is not in Syria. He escaped, es escaped from Damascus to other country. <laughs> Hail Taiha is a narrative set in the 50-year period between the late 1950s to around 28, and depicted through half the lives of a daughter named Hail, it means horse, and a mother named Taiha, it means lost. And this uh, now actress singing. It's a Kurdish poet. Simonetta, could you turn the volume up, please? Hey, 
家族はマスクを外す部屋は凹凸物の匂いでまたガスマスクをつける1991年1月ソマリアで内戦勃発バングラディッシュで巨大台風Thank you very much. Thank you. And、uh, <laughs> sorry, it's、uh, so <laughs> little bit confused. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so I think、thank、that you, we have just yes,、uh, thank you, Fabio. some、uh, question. And also, Roberta will、uh, read, and also Jessica,、uh, I don't know if Sushi Sota or someone else、uh, reply. So, a question for Jessica、uh, from the people who are watching. How long is the process for building skin, skills about theater in conflict zones for you, for your experience? For Jessica Kawa. Please, Jessica, unmute the mic. Thank you. Is it now clear? You can hear me now. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you, Japan, for that wonderful、uh, clips and also for tell, showing us what you have been doing and how you have been doing it. Thank you, thank you. We are learning.、Uh, in regard to the question that has been raised, the process. Of skill building blocks, it is throughout the process. If, for example, you have、um, a week long、uh, situation where you are working with the people, from day one, you are building the, the blocks, suspending your, your judgment,、uh, identifying the assumption, listening, perception, trying to get everything, inquiry and reflection. You are doing them all simultaneously, but you keep knowing that you, there is something you can discover even at the end of the interactions and even showcasing in case you build a play together. Even as you are doing the process of building the play, you are still building the blocks. And that's why I said that at the end of any encounter or engagement of theater in conflict, You, the facilitator, the person from the other end who has come in to build together with the community, you learn a lot. And also, you are skilling the people on how to go about it because step by step, you must move with the people. You don't leave them behind. You must bring them on board. It takes longer time to bring them on board, but once on board, they begin to drive you to where. The action is. It, there is no limit on, on skill building. You keep building from situation to situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. You, the, you very much the, second. the second question is for ITI Japan. 
how is the response of the audience to the festival of theater born in conflict zones? Okay, Hayasa, would you like to talk? Uh, very strongly, Sorry, I asked uh, Erika uh, to uh, mm. interpret. We are surprised that we are surprised that the audience take the, the projects very from the heart and then and th that was more than we expected at first. So the audience really loved it. It started. あの、企画なんですけども、あの、新聞でも取り上げられたりとか、え、批評も出たりとか、え、注目集めてます。演劇会でも中国集めてます。We started really small size with 50 audience in a narrow uh narrow gallery space, but it attracts the audience every time fully and newspapers, mass media get the uh, uh the announcement and then telling the reviews of the of the performances and the, the we really happy to realize that the audience love it so that which means that they understand what is going on in the world i think thank you very much for this answer there are uh, there is another question both for uh, uh, jessica kawa and the uh, iti japan colleagues um, which are the greatest difficulties in organizing your work and in general in doing theater in conflict zones? Please, Jessica. Thank you. Jessica, unmute, please. The mic, the mic, please. Okay. I didn't get the question at the beginning. Which are the greatest difficulties in organizing your work and in general in doing theater in conflict zones? The greatest difficulties that you encounter? The greatest, of course, thank you so much. The greatest difficulty is time. Time, time, time. Because uh, this work is a process work. And the process work requires time, and that's why it is time consuming. You need time to do the research on the, the subject you want to do, especially if you are invited, you need to get more information very quickly, and also to verify that information from the ground. First you do, like now we can do library information from online, from everywhere, from newspapers. But then you really need to do also on ground at the community level, at the place you are going to do this engagement, you must get the way they behave, the social, political, economic, and psychological situations you must research. And that research takes some time. It can take a week, it can take three days. But then after that, making alliances, making collaborations, arranging, arranging the the, the collaborating teams, as I told you where to begin, you must seek the, those collaborations, otherwise your effort will go in vain. That's why most of the development projects, they fail because of lack of that uh, prior preparation, which we call reconnaissance uh, preparation, going to the venue and finding out what are the circumstances on the ground which people you are going to work with and uh, how is the setup? Are the people allowed to be out beyond a certain hour? If you are working with women, for example, the times, you must also assess the times they are available. If it is for children, you must also set a date when the children are not going to school or not needed at home. Uh, when, the children, when are the permissions granted for the children, or if it is an adult, or if it's in the camp, 
the, the refugee camp, for example, you must get permission to go into the camp itself. And it takes a month and a half to process that permission to go into a refugee camp. In ID, IDP, the internally displaced persons, because they are mostly nationals, there it takes a little bit shorter, but in a, 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 a refugee camp settlement, which is a multinational, you need to go through the prime minister's office and those letters to be responded to take time. So it is more time, 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 time. That's it. Thank you Thanks. very much, Jessica. And now to the Japanese colleagues. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Hayashi, what is the most difficult things you have experienced in the project? Mike on the Mike on the There are so many, many difficulties we I come from <laughs> through this project. For example, how we can find, looking for, find out the uh, script of the interesting mm -hmm. play, uh, and how we find, uh, looking for, find out a uh, translator. For example, yes. Pakistan language is Urdu language, mm -hmm. and Philippine Tagalog language. <laughs> and, uh, and also, Hail Taiha, uh, which movie you, which video uh, already you saw. Uh, this this play was written by Arabic language, but dialogue, uh, Hogan, dialogue. Dialect, dialect. Dialect mm -hmm. of no serious area. And also mm -hmm. uh, mixed with Kurdish language, a poet. Mm -hmm. And there are no dictionary, Kurdish Japanese dictionary in Japan. There are no translator of Kurdish Japanese <laughs> language. So we started to study Kurdish language at first, and it took three years. <laughs> mm. And five, after three years, finally, we translate all the play. <laughs> mm. This is one of the difficulty to find mm. the translator. Not only this. Yeah, thank you very much. It's very important to, under, to highlight this barrier of uh, language translations that uh, very often prevent from knowing uh, other dramaturgists, other theater uh, plays, uh, other cultures. Indeed, it's uh, a great uh, topic that you highlighted. Thank you. Okay, I, I want to ask to Tobias to say something, then I will close. Uh, is important meeting. You have to activate the microphone. Qualification and Elika, the translation you have from this place we have seen, it's all into Japanese, not into English. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, the, I lost the, it. The booklets you give out uh, that published is, um, is it in Japanese and or in English, like the theater, the theater born in conflicts in conflict zones yes the theater yearbook we publish is both in japanese edition and in english edition oh. so the the, the, the the titles are theater yearbook well theater yeah, yeah, in know. japan yeah is for this. english and, and then theater abroad is in, in japanese and, uh, but um particularly the, for the theater born in english uh, conflict zones you mean yeah oh right how about that, Ayako? I think the theatre yearbook covers uh, that year's theatre in conflict, uh, theatre born in conflict zones, our project. But the theatre born in conflict zones, the project itself, the book has not been published yet. Okay. Yes. Be because mm -hmm. I thought about like, if there are texts that you have produced, um, we mm. could put it in the newsletter and say, okay, here mm. is in um, the, the text of your projects over the 12 years, mm. and then people mm. download it on the website. Oh. But it's only in, right. in, in Japanese, 
Mm-hmm. And it's just the Japanese public who, who can download mm-hmm. it. Okay. So yeah. I'm, I, okay. I'm, I'm very um, thankful to Jessica and all the, the Japanese friends like Hideki, Elika, Sushi, Ayako, uh, for telling us what, what you are doing. Um, it's very interesting also that, to see that you played Shahid Nadim before he wrote the World Here Today message. And I also think he would be a good candidate for a webinar in the future. And I think uh, if, if you need any contacts, um, I, I can provide you. And there are also other people I think of in Uruguay, in, um, in um, Croatia, who could be a good candidate for giving a webinar. That's what I want to say, but I'm very thankful. It uh, really, um, Jessica even talked more in detail of what she's doing and also what you are doing in Japan. It's wonderful and thank you very much for giving an insight to, to um, other people who are not working in conflict zones or maybe not how you work. So thank you very much. And I give it back to Fabio. Thanks a lot to Fabio, um, mm. Roberta, Simonetta, and also the team, the Astragali team behind who helps to put this thank together. Thank you very much. Also, this is the, the last meeting of this uh, series of Theater in Conflict Zone, but also the success of this meeting uh, uh, it's very important and also we are sure that we will uh, organize again other meetings with other people. It's very important to uh, know deeper what uh, all the ITI communities is doing all over the world and also about a topic so important. Also, uh, it's very important also the experience of uh, Japan Center and also the deep connection with the experience of the Second World War is in the memory, of course, of uh, the history of everyone. And also, it's a very impressive the uh, effort that you are producing on this. And also, it's very important to enlarge these uh, uh, common experiences that we have uh, in uh, conflict zones. Also, uh, we have organized this meeting, but we haven't spoken about our experiences in, uh, in conflict zones. Perhaps uh, next time we will do something connected with this. We have uh, we are ready to restart. Uh, also in pandemic uh, say situation, we know it's very difficult. But also we are uh, ready to go in Palestine at the beginning of September, for example, in Jenin uh, refugee camp to work and and many other things to restart to restart again. Because I think that the work uh, of ITI mainly in uh, conflict zones and also working with the refugees uh, it's very with the migrants it's very important it's a an element of the living experience of theater and also the importance also i want to thank you jessica cabo it also it's always a very great experience to meet you but i prefer to meet you really <laughs> concretely in the future and also with all the friends of uh, japanese center it was very important for us to invite you and to listen to your experience and we appreciate a lot your work and also we have to work uh, so I, we have just said something with uh, tobias also to host uh, inside the the website of iti worldwide the materials that we have produced and also we can correct something to overcome the technical problems that generally for the people of performing arts is a common <laughs> dimension. We also always uh, front the, the problem, <laughs> the technical problem for this. I want to thank you one more time. Have thank a good you. night. Thank you very for much. You. <laughs> and also see you soon and stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank I hope much. to see you soon. Thank Bye. you very much for your Thank you, thank you Tobias. Thank you, Fabio. Thank, thank you. you, Jessica. See you. Thank you, okay. Simonetta. <laughs> thank you so much. See you. Okay. Goodbye.